What do we actually know about Google's algorithm, presented in Pachakacha style, 20 slides, 20 seconds apiece? There's now over 3.5 billion Google searches a day, and with good reason. You type in a few words and hit enter, and in under a second, Google returns the best results from 30 trillion web pages. But it wasn't always this way. Before we had Google, we had other search engines. We had Lycos and Alta Vista. And what they would do is crawl the web and index all the words on each page. And so if a page mentioned Microsoft, say, 30 times or more on their site or on that particular page, and that's more than Microsoft's actual website, then when you search for Microsoft, you might see this minor page above Microsoft's actual results. That's why Larry Page came up with PageRank. While he was at Stanford, he noticed that academic citations, academic papers cite other academic papers, and the ones that get cited the most are often the most important. He applied this to the web, and he said the pages that get cited the most by others in the form of links are most likely to be the most authoritative. So if I write a little blog about Syria, that might be one of these purple dots, but the New York Times is going to be the big red dot because they're getting all these links pointed to them from other websites. And the big orange one, C, that could be an academic study, study or something like that that New York Times is citing. So that link is worth more. And now we have much better results. We don't have to click to page three or page five. Right on page one and even at the top, that's where most of the clicks happen because Google has gotten very good in just a few words combing through all the pages on the web and giving us the ones that are the most relevant, really what the most authoritative and what we're looking for. I remember as a kid, people would tie, kids would tie these little strings to, to quarters to try to fish them back out and get free sodas. And the soda companies got wise to this and made it harder and harder with each iteration of pop machine. But kids would keep coming back and doing this and coming up with stronger strings and different schemes to try to get free soda. Imagine what people do when the stakes are much, much higher. When people search for commercial keywords, they're likely going to buy something on Google. So if in order to get traffic to your website or visitors to your website, you need links. You better believe people were buying and selling links. And they came up with all kinds of schemes to buy expired domains and point links around and sell them, do all kinds of things Google didn't like. So Google came out with the Penguin update. The Penguin update penalized websites that were engaging in various link schemes that Google didn't approve of. So people would be making money one day, and the next day they would completely disappear from the results. Not on page one, not on page five invisible on Google if they were doing any of this link manipulation. So now the people that had built up these link manipulating assets had a different purpose for them. They could weaponize them and something called negative SEO search engine optimization emerged. Basically they could take the links and now point them to their competitor sites and incur penalties for their competitors so their competitors would disappear from Google's ranks and people had to worry about disavowing bad links. Now we have a number of search engine optimization tools here at the bottom that try to mimic what Google does. They crawl the web and they're indexing not just all the words that are on each page, but what are all the interconnections between the pages? How, what is the map of the World Wide Web? Where are all those little blue links point? And what are the most valuable links? So one of them is Hrefs, and they, because they have all this data, they did a study of two million keywords. That's basically searches in Google. And they tried to reverse engineer what did the results show? Now, on-page SEO refers to things on your own website, things you can control when you build a website. But what they found when they looked at the study was on-page factors mattered. For example, if you had madisonplumber.com and someone Googled Madison Plumber, that might help you. It's an exact match domain. But th those factors were dwarfed by the ones we see on the right here, which is links. How many different domains link to us? How many pages? How many links total? That dwarfs the effect that even having the keywords right in the title of your page or domain do. Now, Rand Fishkin from Moz is another, he runs another SEO company, and he basically said on Twitter, hey, do this Google search, here's me at number seven, click my link. And in three hours after people have been doing this, it had risen up to number one. It doesn't surprise us necessarily because Google's got all of this user behavior data, and they roll that back in to improve their search results. Now, Brian Dean from Backlinko teamed up with a number of the SEO companies and also did a, uh, an analysis of one million search results. And again, he found some on-page factors and some off-page factors. So we looked at, out of the million results, what correlated with higher rankings. And we have some things here that we actually have control over as webmasters or someone with a website. Longer word count matters. Write long blog posts. Have shorter URL lengths. Have a secure site and make sure your page loads in under two seconds. And then again, we also saw higher links, higher authority links, more backlinks correlated with higher rankings. 
Now, it wasn't just the black hat SEOs who had Google to fear or fearing Google's actions. White hat SEOs who were following their guidelines also got hit because Google started hiding what were the keywords that people searched that brought them to your website. So you were no longer able to see the results, basically, of your search engine optimization efforts. So Groupon ran a study and said, what else is Google hiding? So organic search is the SEO result. Direct search is someone types in your domain and hits enter. And when they de-index their site, the direct traffic dropped off as well, which doesn't really make sense. Why would someone, why would people stop directly searching for a website, or rather going directly to a website, at the same time that it was de-indexed from Google? So it looks like Google's under-reporting the results. So what's the state of SEO science right now? We're not at Einstein, we're not at Copernicus, we're probably at Aristotle, but we've got some promising studies and some ways forward. And it's interesting to think about how else can we reverse engineer and understand what Google's algorithm is doing when it's proprietary and secret? Another thought is, can we, in the same way that we're reverse engineering correlations basically in a million results, could we create a million domains automatically or have a computer do it and then run millions of searches? and learn something that way. That's a possible way forward. There's problems with it because Google has spam filters, but it's something to think about. In any case, even if we were to perfectly map out the Google universe and how it works, we know that they would just be able to change it up on us again.